Hey guys, this is B from Bees Gaming, and in today's episode, we're going to go over the camera system and some other options that you have while inside the sim. If you enjoy this content and these videos, please don't forget to like and subscribe. Alright guys, first I kind of want to talk about the camera views. Uh, so, starting with inside the cockpit, uh, track IR is if you have a headset and like an IR setup where you can turn your head and be able to turn what you're seeing you know, on the screen. I do not have this, so it's not really something I'm, I'm going to be able to demonstrate. Uh, I use the fixed look for the camera type instead of free look. So free look is when you use your mouse and you can look all the way around uh, without hitting any buttons. I keep it on uh, fixed look because this means when I hit the right mouse button, I'm able to look around. And this is the way I like it. Uh, it's easier for me to do it this way instead of always having the mouse because I use the mouse a lot to click on the buttons or you know change things on the garment and stuff like that. Another thing is this upper position. If you click that button, it kind of allows you to see over the nose of the aircraft. Uh, another way to do it is to be just hit the space bar and that'll move it up and down as well. Uh, typically, I will fly like this during a landing because it's easier to see. Uh, during flight, I will stay on this view and probably even be a little zoomed in more on the instruments, just depending on the type of flying I'm doing. Uh, this way, I'm ready to click or do anything I need to do up here. Next, you can do an external view. And again, you use the uh, mouse and the right click to look around. And you use the mouse wheel to zoom in and out. So this is as far out as you can zoom in. Or sorry, this is as far out as you can zoom out. And this is as far as you can zoom in, all using the mouse wheel. So this is just if you want to look around or if you like flying from the external view. And obviously you have your compass, your airspeed, what your engine's doing, your fuel, angle of attack, uh, flaps, trim, your altitude, and your vertical speed. So you can pretty much see everything that you need to from this part right here. And then next there's showcase. And this is actually pretty cool because it's basically like you're in a drone. So you can change the speed of your drone and the way you use this is you use your keyboard, your W goes forward, S goes backwards, A goes left, D goes right, and then you use your uh, numpad to tilt up, down, left, right. And then you can also use R to go up in altitude and F to come down in altitude. So this is pretty neat. You can set up different shots if you want to. Or when you're in this mode, your controls no longer control the aircraft. So right now, if I move the throttle all the way up, nothing's going to happen. So this is just from viewing. You're kind of in an active pause, if you will, while in this mode. But it's pretty neat. You can set up a lot of shots. You can also just go explore in this mode as well. You can see what's going on. You can even, you know, if you want your drone to go faster, then go ahead and put it up to 100%. You can really get altitude pretty quickly. It's just a pretty neat way to, if you're not familiar with the area, to go look around or just set up some cool shots if you want to. So if you wanted to see, take, get a picture of your plane on the runway from a distance, then you can go ahead and set up that shot. As far as I know, there is no limit on how far away from your plane you can get in this mode. The next thing I want to talk about is the air traffic control. So if you hit the ATC, the little tower, then you can see uh, the conversation from air traffic control. And now you can either click on these or push the numbers, the associated number, to uh, make these announcements. Next thing I want to talk about is these checklists. And it's best if we go back into the cockpit for a second. And so it's kind of neat because let's say you need to set your parking brake and you're not sure exactly where it is. You can click this little eye icon and then it will show you where it is so now I can release it and set it so let's say for the starting engine you want it set and you can do that for each and every one of these and it will kind of give give you the run through on how exactly to start the engine different aircrafts have different types of checklists uh, the Cirrus only has the starting engine checklist but there are some that have starting engine all the way to shut down at the end of your flight next you have basic controls this is my control there's not not really a whole lot I can show AI control is pretty neat, so I use the manage, they have the AI manage the radio comms a lot. So when you're doing like long flights and you're going to step away from your computer for a minute, 
or two, this is good because then your co-pilot or whatever is going to manage the radios for you. So you don't need to be here and actively watching the ATC and having to push the buttons to respond to air traffic control. So it's really good. You could also have the AI do the checklist for you. So if you don't want to go through and click all the buttons for the checklist, then you could actually just have the AI run it for you. Or you can even just have them do the whole flight for you and control the aircraft with that button right there. You can change your fuel and your payload. So if you want super heavy, high payload, obviously that's already maximum, but but let's just say that's what you want, or you can just reset it to whatever it was beforehand. Navlog shows where you've been. Objectives you don't really use in like these free flights. Uh, travel to is if there's a flight plan, you can actually go to different points in the flight. I can show this later when we actually have a flight plan loaded. The VFR map is also very useful. You can have it locked onto your plane or not locked onto your plane and be able to look around. So if you wanted to go to a different airport, let's say to this HMT, then, then you can actually just say, okay, roughly I need to fly south to get there. You can also change the weather while you're here. So we can change the time. We can change our weather in general. Let's say we want snow since we're up in the mountains. Then we can get snow. You can change how much snow there is, how much precipitation you want at the exact moment, how you want your clouds. Uh, there's a lot you can do for, for the weather. And then the settings, just what do you actually want on your toolbar? And you can deselect if you everything or... And then this is a pause and play. Uh, just pauses what you're doing at the moment an active pause so you can still look around uh, and once you hit play then you resume moving again all right and that's about all i wanted to cover in this tutorial uh thanks for watching please like and subscribe and as always have a good night